Okay. So first, let's talk about the rhizosphere. Okay. So plants. Hang on. Just optimizing this. Okay, plants have roots underneath the ground. And these roots secrete chemicals. Okay. And these chemicals, some bacteria like these chemicals. Okay. So they come close to the plants and they come close to the plant roots because they like the chemicals. And the roots, the roots like the bacteria okay this is this is very common okay and this region the space is called the rhizosphere okay so the rhizosphere is the area around roots and it's the area in which rhizobacteria live in the soil, in the dirt. Okay, that's the rhizosphere. Now, associated, so, okay, so when you see the term microbiome, that term, what that means is all the bacteria, all the bacterial species in a region of space. Okay, so the microbiome um, of the roots is essentially the same thing as the rhizosphere. Okay, that should make sense. Now, diversity in the rhizosphere is low. Okay, let me write this. Diversity in the rhizosphere is low. That means normally, normally, if you were going to look at a patch of dirt, okay, there might be many different kinds of bacteria, many different kinds in a normal space of dirt, okay? But that is not what the rhizosphere looks like. The rhizosphere usually just has a few kinds of bacteria. So in this case, it's got all green bacteria. Okay, it does not, it doesn't look like this. It's low diversity. Diversity is low. Why, why is that? It's because of this relationship. The plant likes these green bacteria and these green bacteria like the plant. So these green bacteria, sometimes what they do, sometimes what the green bacteria does is they secrete toxins, okay, into the dirt. And these toxins, so I'll say toxins, these toxins can kill all the other bacteria. Okay, and so that's why around the root, there's low diversity, okay? Now, in this sense, in this sense, the roots, okay, I'm gonna write this out. The plant roots 
are like farmers. Okay, this is an analogy. This is an analogy. In the same way that a farmer, okay, in his field, a farmer will plant seeds of a crop and that crop will grow, okay? And in that field, in the field, there's only one type of plant, okay? Diversity is low in the field, okay? Because the farmer is only planting crops that he likes, that he wants to eat. It's the same thing it's the same thing in the roots of the plant. The roots of the plant only allow bacteria that they like to grow around them. Okay? So they're like the roots are like farmers farming their own bacteria. Okay? Now remember this relates back to the hydrogen hypothesis okay remember the hydrogen hypothesis the hydrogen hypothesis was that a methanogen methanogen okay methanogens eat uh, hydrogen what was the other one? Oh no hydrogen and something else I can't remember right now I can't remember what the other one was. Hydrogen and something else. And bacteria make that, okay? So the hydrogen hypothesis was that this methanogen and this bacteria started to live together. Because a bacteria would make hydrogen and the other material. <laughs> And the methanogen would eat it, okay? And then eventually, eventually, okay, the methanogen swallowed and came even closer, lived closer to the bacteria, and eventually the methanogen took inside the bacteria, and then it evolved to mitochondria. That was the hydrogen hypothesis, okay? This was, this is an example of evolving symbiosis, okay? Symbiosis, symbiosis is when two organisms, two organisms, organ, organisms live together and each benefits okay and the hydrogen hypothesis was an evolving symbiosis this the rhizosphere is the same thing it's the same thing okay the bacteria produce chemicals that the roots eat and the roots produce chemicals that the bacteria eats so they both help each other, okay? So this is an evolving symbiosis, okay? So let's talk about PGPRs. PGPRs, okay, that's plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Now, we know what that is. We know what that is. So plant growth promoting, what does this mean? That means that the bacteria, the bacteria that live near the roots actually help the plant grow bigger, okay? Sometimes the bacteria, sometimes the rhizobacteria help the plant grow okay these are pgprs why is this useful 
why do we care? Why is this useful? Well, if the farmer, if the farmer is planting his crops and in this side of the field, he plants his seeds, but he also adds, get a different color. He also adds some PGPRs, PGPR bacteria. These are rhizobacteria. <coughs> In his seeds. What can happen is these plants can grow bigger. Okay, much, much more than without the rhizobacteria. Okay, understand? Okay. So PGPRs are soil bacteria that colonize plants. So sometimes, sometimes the bacteria, the rhizobacteria, let's get that blue. Sometimes the rhizobacteria actually go into the plant. They can colonize the plant. Okay. That's what that means. They're not pathogens. They don't make the plant sick. They're helpful. They're good. Okay. The PGPRs, they can enhance biomass, enhance the roots. So sometimes when you plant these PGPRs, the roots look like this underneath the ground. And in the minus, like this, just little. Okay, let me show you an example of this. Show you an example. Look at this picture. This picture, this grass. Okay, this is grass on the left no rhizobacteria, no bacteria, no PGPRs. On the right, PGPRs, PGPR bacteria. Look at how much more roots are in this grass just because we added bacteria that the grass likes, okay? So this can help, this can help crops grow. Okay. They can increase yields of the potato, sugar beets, radish, sweet potatoes, turf grass. That means when you have PGPRs, sometimes if there is a fruit, let's let's say, hmm, let's say this this produces some kind of fruit. The fruits with the PGRs will be better yield compared to no PGPRs, okay? So PGPRs can do a lot in agriculture. And there's a lot of study now on isolating and finding new strains of PGPRs that can enhance growth for different types of agricultural crops. Okay, so let's talk about the history of PGPRs. How were these discovered? Okay, history. History of PGPR. So, there's a famous paper, very famous paper. I will pull it up.
This is from a professor named Dr. Joe Klepper, who works at my university, Auburn University, and he's considered the father of PGPRs. So I'll show you Joe's paper, Dr. Klepper. This is in 1980. Okay, so his paper is Enhanced Plant Growth by Siderophores Produced by Plant Growth Promoting Rhizobacteria by Joe Klepper in Nature. So let's talk about what they do in this paper. So in this paper, there is a strain of Pseudomonas and it's called Pseudomonas fluorescence. <coughs> and the reason it's called Pseudomonas fluorescence is because um, if you, oh no, some, look at this picture right here, this picture. Some Pseudomonas strains, Mama. Hang on, I need to mute somebody. Please mute your microphones. Thank you. Some strains of Pseudomonas can produce fluorescent compounds, fluorescent chemicals. Okay, so fluorescent chemicals, so Pseudomonas fluorescence produces fluorescent chemicals. Okay, these are chemicals that shine. Okay, and it turns out that these chemicals, these chemicals are iron binding compounds. Okay, and they have a name. They're called siderophores. Okay, and in potatoes, where Dr. Klepper was studying Pseudomonas, so in potatoes, in potatoes, what Dr. Klepper found was that Pseudomonas was secreting siderophores into the rhizosphere. Okay. So let's get a siderophore. Siderophore equals this. Okay. And siderophores bind iron. Okay. Iron. And if you're a plant, let's draw this out again. Here's some roots. Okay. And Here's Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas equals this. Here's Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas expresses and secretes siderophores, okay, into the dirt. And the siderophores pick up and steal all the iron in the dirt. Okay, and iron is necessary for microbial life. Okay, so if there's an invading bacteria, imagine there are other bacteria, other bacteria that are trying to invade into this niche. Okay. The other bacteria cannot get the iron because it's bound by the siderophore. Okay. So what this means is Pseudomonas secretes a toxin, which is the siderophore that prevents other bacteria from growing in the rhizosphere, okay? And this was the first mechanism. This was the first mechanism 
demonstrating how plant growth could be promoted. Okay, because if these if these bacteria are pathogens, pathogens, okay, these are bad bacteria. Okay, if they're trying to invade, they can't get in because all the iron is bound to the siderophores. So in this case, the pseudomonas is like a shield. Okay, like, like a shield blocking these pathogens. Okay. <coughs> so let's look at how Dr. Klepper proved this. Look at this paper. Very, very simple paper. Okay, look at this figure one. So figure one is pseudomonas in the middle. Okay, and this is a pathogen. Okay, and the pseudomonas is preventing growth of the pathogen, just like I said. The pseudomonas is blocking the pathogen from grow from growing. Okay, that's exactly what you see here. Okay, now what's on the right? Look, if you add iron, it can no longer block. If you add iron, it can no longer block. So what they've done is. In this experiment, they've added iron. They've given iron to these bacteria. Okay. And that allows them to come in and colonize the plant. Okay. That's this data. So this is proof. Okay. This is proof. This is proof that one mechanism of PGPR help to plants is by controlling iron concentrations in the soil. And that prevents growth from bad bacteria, plant pathogens. Okay. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, type five in the chat, if that makes sense. Very good, good. Okay. So Dr. Klepper, Dr. Klepper did the same experiment. Dr. Klepper did the same experiment in the field. Field. Okay, so here's Dr. Klepper. He has glasses. <laughs> he has glasses. And he put one field. Okay, let's. And in one field, no iron. And in another field, put the iron. Okay. And he planted his seeds. He planted his seeds. And he planted his seeds with rhizobacteria, the pseudomonas, in both treatments. And the plants grew. Okay. But these ones, 
did not grow as much. Okay, the ones where he added iron did not grow as much. And when he compared this, when he compared this to another plot, okay, which was minus iron minus PGPR, seeds, this one did not have PGPRs. These ones were small too. Small, big, small. I should make these bigger. Okay, and what this proves This experiment proves that PGPRs enhance, oh, let me fix this, enhance plant growth, and it proves the mechanism is because of siderophores sequestering iron. So we know the mechanism. We know the mechanism of how this works. So this is what Joe Klepper did. This is the history. This is the first experiment. This was the first experiment on PGPRs. First experiment on PGPRs. Okay? Okay, let's move on. So we know a lot more about PGPRs now. We know a lot more about PGPRs now. Okay. There are multiple mechanisms in which they can promote plant growth. Okay. And there's also multiple species of bacteria that can act as PGPRs. So I've listed some of them out. Okay. Some of these genera are, so these are the genus, the genus of the bacteria that can be PGPRs. Bacillus, Streptomyces, Pseudomonas, Burkholderia, and Agrobacterium. We know Agrobacterium, okay? In the rhizosphere, the most common, the most common one is Bacillus. And Bacillus, so Bacillus can be a PGPR, okay? And Bacillus is gram positive. That means it has a thick cell wall. So thick cell wall and one membrane. And bacillus is also, bacillus is also a model bacteria. We know a lot about bacillus. <coughs> we know a lot about bacillus because it's really good at recombinant protein expression. It's really good at recombinant protein expression. Okay, so you can take plasmids. Plasmid with gene X and a promoter. And you can put that plasmid in bacillus. And bacillus is really special because, because it only has one membrane, it's really good at 
secreting proteins. So when you put that plasmid in there, it will make the protein and it will pump the protein out into the media. Into the media. Okay. So this is special because sometimes when we purify proteins, we grow some bacteria. Here's a bacteria. Sometimes when we express proteins, we purify protein from within the bacteria. With bacillus, our protein gets secreted into the media. Okay, so if this is if this is our protein, bacillus puts our protein into the media. And then all we have to do is run that media through a purification scheme and we can collect our protein. So what's important? What's important about bacillus? It's very useful for protein purification if you want to purify from the media because it secretes, because it can secrete so well. Bacillus is also special. Bacillus is also special because it has no codon bias. This is important. This is special. Remember how when I showed you the E. coli, the E. coli codon table, and there was a percent, and there was a list of codons, A, T, G, A, T, C, A, T, A, A, T, T, etc. Etc. And some of these it liked better. 5%. 1%, 0.0, It liked certain ones, E. coli liked certain ones better. It liked certain ones more. So E. coli, E. coli had codon preference. Okay. This can be a problem. This can be a problem. Because imagine we have E. coli, And we make a plasmid with gene X. And in, in that plasmid are a bunch of ATT codons, which it doesn't like. Okay, so if there was like ATT, ATT, ATT. If that was in protein X and we put that into E. coli, in this case, E. coli might not make our protein, okay? Because it might not have the tRNA. Make sense? But in bacillus, but in bacillus, there is no codon bias. It has all the tRNAs. Okay, so bacillus can translate any protein well. Does that make sense? So bacillus is a bacillus is a very special a very special bacteria. Now this is interesting. Okay. This is interesting because bacillus is a PGPR. And remember what PGPRs do? 
Remember what PGPRs do? They secrete chemicals. PGPRs secrete chemicals, okay? Which is probably one reason, this is probably one reason I'll write it out. This is probably one reason why bacillus is a good PGPR because it is really good at secreting proteins. Those proteins can probably then get to the roots. Make sense? Okay. So what else can PGPRs do? <clears throat> they can do a few things okay one of the common uses is as bioprotectants bioprotectants okay this is when I drew this is like when I drew the shield that blocked the bad bacteria. Okay, bioprotectants, bioprotectants protect the plant from invading pathogens. Okay, and the one mechanism which we've already discussed for that was, one mechanism for this was the siderophores. Okay. But another mechanism, another mechanism, another mechanism is if we have the plant roots. Here's the plant and here's the PGPRs. Sometimes the plants, like I said, will invade. The PGPRs might invade the plant. They might infect the plant. Okay. So another mechanism mechanism is that sometimes PGPRs colonize is the best word colonize the plant and they stimulate the plants immune system almost like a vaccine so like a vaccine okay like in a vaccine You have, uh, I'm trying to draw it, a syringe, okay? And in a vaccine, you inject a person with, you can inject them with a weakened, a weakened virus, weakened virus or weakened pathogen, weakened, okay? And sometimes that can then stimulate our immune system to fight off stronger, badder pathogens. The PGPRs sometimes act like that. They sometimes act like a vaccine. They colonize the plant and they stimulate the plant's immune system. So that's another mechanism by which they can be a bioprotectant. Does that make sense? If you understand that, write seven in the chat. Good, very good. Other things PGPRs do. What else? do PGPRs do? They can be bio fertilizers. 
biofertilizers. Okay. In the environment, oh. in the environment, say, here's the sky, here's the grass, okay, and the dirt. There's nitrogen in the air, okay? So nitrogen is in the atmosphere, in the air, okay? And life needs nitrogen. Why? What do we use nitrogen for? What do we use nitrogen for? Write it in the chat. Yes, very good, very good. Zu, Zijian, to make proteins. Very good. Nitrogen is used to make proteins. Every amino acid, every amino acid needs nitrogen. Okay. What? N2, nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is very difficult for life to, well, how would I say it, um, to metabolize. Okay, it's very really difficult to take that nitrogen from the air and metabolize it. So there are special, there are special bacteria, there are special bacteria, okay, called diazotropes, okay, and these are bacteria, and they can take the nitrogen from the air, and they can convert it to ammonia, okay, ammonia, NH3, so diazotropes, Convert night. Oh no, what's happening? <laughs> Convert nitrogen into ammonia. And animals, animals, bacteria, plants can use ammonia. Okay, so some PGPRs, PGPRs are diazotropes. And so they, if this is the root, <coughs> excuse me, and here's the bacteria. They can provide the plant with nitrogen. Okay. So they fix nitrogen. This is very, very common. This is common in legumes. This is like peanut, peanut, beans, um, I think soybeans, soybeans. Okay, so it's very, very common that some PGPRs are diazotropes, and this is very, very common in legumes, peanut, soybeans. And so they promote the growth of the plant by giving nitrogen. So this is an example of a biofertilizer. It's making the soil more nutrient rich for the plants. Okay. What else do PGPRs do? Biostimulants. So plants have hormones. 
plants have hormones. Hormones are chemicals that stimulate growth. And they have special hormones, two, two very special hormones, two very special, special hormones. One is called oxen. Oxen promotes root growth in plants. And cytokinin. Cytokinins promotes shoot growth in plants. Okay. So usually if you add, if you add oxen, you get a whole bunch of roots. If you add cytokinin, you get a whole bunch of shoots. Okay. Now some bacteria, here's a bacteria, here's a chromosome. Some bacteria on their chromosome, zoom in, on their chromosome, sometimes they have genes, say A, B, C. Sometimes they have genes, genes that synthesize auxin. Okay. So if we were to take this bacteria and plant it as a PGPR with crops, it will produce auxin and it will secrete the auxin into the soil. And then that will cause the plants to grow more roots. Okay. That's probably what you're seeing in this picture. This is probably bacillus, which is secreting auxin and helping this plant, helping this turf grass produce roots. Okay. Now, some PGPRs, let's get a different color. Some bacteria, bacteria two, have a chromosome. And on that chromosome are genes. Let's say one, two, three. And the purpose of those genes is to synthesize cytokinin. Okay. And if you add these bacteria, if you add these bacteria to the soil, the plant will grow very high, will shoot, will grow more shoots, more leaves. Okay. So often what happens in PGPRs, often, what is common is to create blends of PGPRs, okay? These are like soups. So if you take a culture and you put in some media and you grow different PGPRs together in a mix and then plant these with the roots, okay? And different PGPRs will help the plant in different ways. Like we mentioned as bioprotectants, as bio fertilizers, as bio stimulants, okay? And that is everything you need to know about PGPRs. Let's take a 10 minute break. 10 minute 